McGee Wolf here with The Wolf Group, back again with another video designed to help you make really good decisions in home ownership. Now this video is definitely for you if you are interested in learning how the COVID pandemic will affect your credit. So let's get to it. COVID, COVID, COVID. That's all we're talking about. It's COVID all the time. Everywhere we look in the newspapers, on TV, in the news, it's all we talk about when we get together with people. It's everywhere. And people may wonder, not bringing the subject up as it relates to your credit, how could it possibly affect your credit? Well, you may remember uh, several videos ago when this first began, I was expressing some concerns about how the CARES Act would be impacting people. Now the CARES Act, for a brief summary, was that act that allowed people that have loans, mortgage loans backed by Fannie and Freddie to essentially not have to make a mortgage payment for six months and then also extend it for another six months. So a whole year without making a mortgage payment. And uh, that's a big problem. But for people that need the relief who may have been displaced or lost their job or reduced hours and they really can't make their mortgage payment, I completely understand. But in the CARES Act, it says that you don't have to prove hardship. So literally millions and millions of people, I think there's about 4 million people now, latest count, have uh, requested forbearance, which means we don't have to make a mortgage payment. So uh, a lot of these people are doing it strictly for convenience. Now, how could that possibly negatively affect you? Well, um, it's not supposed to affect your credit in terms of your credit score because it won't show you as being late. But you have to remember that investors are the ones who really drive this train. And when they see that people voluntarily request uh, forbearance and uh, if, if language appears on your credit report that says uh, in forbearance or uh, gives a time frame that you were in for forbearance previously, uh, that represents to the investor that, wow, this person may struggle making a mortgage payment. So they introduce what is called an overlay. They put that on top of all of the other Fannie and Freddie guidelines. Now the investors have the right to do that, to mitigate and manage their own risk uh, in their pool of loans. So now what has been coming down is rules from our investors that are saying if there is forbearance language on the credit report, doesn't have to show you being late, remember that, if there's forbearance language, we can't do the loan. We can't do a mortgage loan. And uh, down the road, they may come up with a time frame. You have to have uh, 12 months or 24 months seasoning since the forbearance period ended. So if you requested forbearance that in effect is for a year, it could be two, three, four years from now before you're able to get another mortgage. I'm just saying there are unintended consequences to this, so you really need to be careful about uh, whether you actually need forbearance or not when you request it. If it's a matter of convenience, I highly recommend you not do it. Now, how does this forbearance language appear on your credit report? Now, this is kind of the scary part. We've had situations where people have just had conversations with their servicer about forbearance and what it means. They didn't take forbearance, but it still has appeared on their credit report. Uh, and we've had to go to links to try to get uh, the credit bureaus to speak to the servicer to put language on there that it is not in forbearance so the loan can move forward. Uh, that's pretty shocking. Now, the underlying element of all this in my opinion, is the CARES Act itself has a flaw. And that flaw is, number one, as I mentioned, you don't have to document hardship. But number two, you don't have to sign anything saying that you request forbearance. It can all be done over the phone. Consequently, if you try to call back in and get it 
removed or make some kind of reference, um, it can be a real struggle. But if you have a document that says, yes, I requested forbearance, or a document doesn't exist that says that you requested forbearance, it's pretty cut and dried. But uh, there's a lot of uncertainty happening with the servicers and what they should report and what they can't. So if you're someone who is considering taking advantage of these very low interest rates that we have right now, and it's awesome, uh, and you want to refinance your home or purchase another home, and there's forbearance language on your credit report, it's going to be a problem. So um, just be really careful about how you proceed considering forbearance. Our goal at The Wolf Group is to deliver great content to help you make really good decisions. If you thought this video was helpful, please subscribe and share. And always remember, here at The Wolf Group, we really appreciate your time. Have a great day.